infinite income. So Frank can take everything that's over $109,560 and buy an annuity. And as long as the annuity has those characteristics, it gets as a payout over a term that's shorter than his actuarial life expectancy. And, and by the way, also, it has to be irrevocable. It has to be an annuity where he can't get the money back, as opposed to the, the, the annuity example that I gave a little bit earlier. It has to be an annuity where he's only entitled to those monthly payments. Then he can have those payments. He can also specify that following his death, the remaining payments will go not to Mass Health, but to his children or to whoever he wants to have them go to. He can send them to the lawyer. You know, he could send them to anybody. So you, you can, he can structure the money. He can keep all of the, the income, and he can structure it so that if he dies, the, income does, the, the money does not go to Mass Health. So in this situation, he can take all of his, his other assets, convert them to an annuity, and then all of the money is safe. In addition to that, I'm just going to mention this one other thing. There is something called the MMMNA, the Minimum Monthly Maintenance Needs Allowance. If you are uh, at home and your spouse is in a nursing home, you are entitled um, to have enough income to keep living while you're at home and to not become impoverished. Uh, you're entitled to that, to the MMMNA. Once again, the Minimum Monthly Maintenance Needs Allowance. That amount varies depending on what your financial situation is. It, it varies on a range, though the minimum is, is how much, Brenda? I think it's $1,750. $1,750 per month is about the minimum. The maximum is about $2,600. The reason why that varies is the $1,750 number is a national number. You're entitled to that no matter where you are in this country. And it, and it is based on a housing number, which is universal across the country. Well, guess what? Housing is a lot more expensive here than it is like in Arkansas. So people who are here tend to be able to show that their housing costs are higher than what the, what the, 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 the amount is that's built into that 1750 figure. And therefore, typically, people can get more money. Also, by the way, uh, if you are in a, an assisted living facility, and if, if, if in this situation, if, if Frank decided to sell his house and go in and take the rest of the money, put it into a big annuity, go into an assisted living facility, the, 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 the presumption is that as long as you have a doctor's certificate for Frank that says that he, need, he medically needs to be in the assisted living facility because he has activities of daily living that are impaired, that he, he can't eat by himself or he has trouble walking or whatever, if you have that, then MassHealth takes the position that the entire cost of the assisted living facility is a housing expense, is a huge housing expense. And therefore, your MMMNA goes up to like the maximum possible number. So, once again, going back, if Mary had been in the nursing home and Frank were still at home, Frank could save all of his money and probably get all of Mary's Social Security money. Remember, in the, in the example, Frank was earning about $1,000 a month, and Mary was earning about $600 a month in Social Security. It, given the fact that all the assets are protected, you could also get MassCell to shift Mary's Social Security money from her to him, because then his total income would still only be $1,600 a month, which would be below the MMMNA, the, the Minimum Monthly Maintenance Needs Allowance. So, contrary to what a lot of folks think, if the two spouses are alive and one spouse goes into the nursing home, you can always protect all of the money. I mean, we've had situations where the spouse at home had a million five, and the one in the nursing home qualified for mass health. Now, Frank, in that situation, has to have less than $109,560 on the day that Mary qualifies for Mass Health. The day after, he can win the lottery, or he can get a big annuity payment from his annuity that he just bought, right? Because, of course, if you're buying an annuity, 
uh, that's going to last over your life expectancy, and say your life expectancy is, say you're Frank and you're, and you're about oh, 70 years old, and your life expectancy is about eight years, or it w which would be about 100 months. If you buy a, a, a million dollar annuity, you're going to be getting payments monthly of $10,000 a month, these gigantic payments, right? So they're going to pile up, but the main thing to remember is, if Frank is below $109,560 on the day that Mary qualifies for Mass Health, then the next day he can get his first big annuity payment, and after that the money can just pile up again. So that's the situation with Frank and Mary. But next slide. What if Frank dies? What if Frank um, uh, then dies? Well. If Frank has, has, has kept his accounts so that Mary is on them jointly, or if Frank hasn't changed his will, right, so that, be, and probably what the will had said, unless Frank had a very bad relationship with Mary, was that, that everything was going to Mary when, when Frank died. If everything went to Mary as a result of Frank's death, well then suddenly Mary would no longer be eligible for mass health, all the money would be vulnerable. And so in this kind of situation, if one spouse is in the nursing home, what is very important is that the other spouse rearrange their asset protection plan and make sure that if Frank dies, all of the assets go to the children, or all of the assets go in trust for the benefit of Mary, or somehow are controlled so that Mary isn't entitled to get them. Because if Mary is entitled to get them, then Mass Health is entitled to get them also. So that's the basic Frank and Mary situation. Next slide. So what, but what about if, you know, if Frank wasn't around? And now, going back to the very first slide, you just have Mary. And Mary is, is once again, if she goes to a nursing home right now, she's got a big problem. So the question is, what, if anything, can Mary do in order to deal with that issue? Um, the most common thing that Mary would do would be to set up a trust. And this is probably the stuff that you've heard about and you know you hear about it on the radio and you see, you, there's a lot of that, that's been written about this. Um, because as I had mentioned a little earlier, excuse me, there is a five year look back period. If I go to try to qualify for Mass Health today, what Mass Health is going to want to know, uh, they're, what they're going to require that I give them, is all of my bank statements uh, for the last five years. And then they're going to look at those bank statements and regarding any transfer out of any one of my accounts that's more than typically $1,000, they're going to want documentation because they want to, unless it's an obvious, you know, you wrote a check to the town of Holden for the taxes or whatever, unless it's a really obvious recipient because they want to make sure that during that five years I didn't give anything away. Because if I gave anything away, and, and the, the figure that I just gave you was that they look at, at chunks of $1,000, but they can look at any size gift. If, that, if I give it, gave anything away during those five years, then the sum of those gifts, if I marry, the sum of those gifts is going to make me ineligible for mass health for some period of time. And the way you'd figure that out, there's like a little equation. You'd add up all of the gifts and then you divide by a per day nursing home cost number. Uh, and MassHealth changes that every once in a while. The last time I heard it was $287. So you take, if you had given away $28,700, if Mary had given that amount away during the previous five years, um, if she'd given that amount away, the, the number of days she'd be ineligible would be 28,700 divided by 287. I think that comes out to 100 days. So, she, so, so and, and, the, and the reason, and of course the effect of her being ineligible, since she's on private pay, and since, you know, in this example, she would have spent down all of her other assets, is there's nobody to pay the nursing home, right? So the nursing home's really unhappy, and they start evicting Mary. Uh, and the, the reason why MassHealth has that rule is to encourage people who have been the recipients of those gifts to give them back uh, and to recapture all of that money. So if there were gifts that were made during that five-year period, then MassHealth is, um, is going to want to uh, make Mary ineligible for a period of time, right? And, and so all planning that needs to get done needs to keep that kind of five-year window in mind. I'm just going to mention one other thing, though, about gifts because once again, as I'm looking in the audience, people are kind of like nodding. Some people have bumped into some of these situations before. The mass health rule is not that you cannot have made a gift. 
It is that you cannot have made a gift if one of the intentions in making the gift was to qualify for Mass Health, right? And it's your burden to show that that was the case. So, if there was a, if, there, if Mary had a, a tradition of giving grandchildren $1,000 for Christmas, or of paying for someone's tuition, right, over a set of years, and it turns out that that set of years ended up including some of these five years looking back, then you can, often not at the caseworker level, but at the administrative appeal level, get Mass Health to reverse themselves and say that gift was all right. We just, we just had one. We just had one where we were actually surprised, right? Because the total amount of the gifts to the grandchildren was about how much? It was like $60,000. But it was over you know, a number of years, and it wasn't you know, in gigantic increments, and we showed that at the time the gifts were made, um, the, in this case, there was a husband and wife, and the, the husband's in the nursing home, the, the, the wife's still at home. At the time the gifts were made, we showed that the husband was still in fairly good physical condition. We had doctor's information and stuff, so we were able to reverse what was the original caseworker determination that, 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 uh, that, um, that Mary couldn't qualify for this period of ineligibility. So anyway, going back. Um, the problem is this five-year window. The way that you can deal with it is, is, is through, you can do it, Mary could do planning for the future, or you all, if you are concerned about these issues, could do planning for the future in a number of ways. One, it, one way is that you could simply give things away. You, I remember at, you know, people saying, well, I just gave my house to my kids. Well, that's great. You know, you can, and you can just give your house to your kids, and as long as um, you've given your house to your kids and five years have gone by, then that asset is no longer counted for mass health purposes. The only problem with the giving your house to your kids, of course, is that you lose some control over your house. So you've got to be really nice to your kids from, from then on. Everybody's got to kind of really stay friendly. 